I'm Vicki Hogarth and welcome to Southwest Magazine. Today we're going to talk about the New Brunswick International Student Program. I'm joined today by Homestay Administrator Wendy Brooks and Natalia Moreno from Mexico and Kate Aruba from Czech Republic. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you for having us. Wendy, Thank can you. we start by doing just an overview of what the international program is and, and what it's like here in New Brunswick? And then we'll hear a bit from okay. you ladies after about what the experience has been like. Um, okay, so in New Brunswick, we have almost a thousand students all over New Brunswick. In southern New Brunswick, we have approximately 230 students, um, international students that come from all over the world. So um, from Mexico, Thailand, um, Japan, everywhere. And so right now, now, this year, we have 23 countries that are represented here in New southern New Brunswick, yeah. um, but we will take them from anywhere. So they come here, study um, in the high schools. So we do take middle schools, but um, in southern New Brunswick this year, we only got one middle school student. So um, the main um, grade that I find we get is grade 11. So And both of these guys are in grade 11. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can we talk a little bit, Natalia and Kate, about what made you pick New Brunswick as the place you wanted to come to. Uh, well, I'm studying English and I'm learning French too, so I wanted something bilingual. I wanted to use both of the languages, and here I can do that, so that's fun. Yeah. I chose New Brunswick because of the nature. I thought it was really pretty. I saw like other pictures from other parts of Canada, and I really like like the coast. And I think St. John, like it's perfect for that. And Kate, you mentioned your best friend from Czech Republic is here too, but in a different city. Uh, I have a friend, yeah, I have a friend here and she's in Hampton, she's, uh, it's a, it's close to St. John but we don't see each other that often, but yeah, she's, she's yeah. here too. <laughs> and are you both here for a full year? Yep. Yep. And is there a choice, Wendy, between six months to a year? Oh, or definitely, yeah. Work? So, um, they can come up to, from eight weeks to up to six months, um, and then a year. So, eight weeks, usually we get a group from Mexico that come, and um, Spain also has a group that comes for eight weeks, and then we also have one semester or two semesters. So, oh my and so yeah, and then they live with a homestay. So, if, they're, mm -hmm. if we have people that want to be a homestay, but they're maybe afraid to do it for a whole 10 months for the two semesters, they can try it for eight weeks and, and see how it feels. So. Can you tell me a little bit about um, how someone would qualify to be a homestay or I guess a host family? Yeah, it's really easy. We have an application process, so they would fill out this application and um, in that application they would be specific of even what kind of student they're looking for. Maybe they have an interest in, they'd prefer a boy over a girl. Um, or maybe they want two students. They can have up to three. And then we try to find the best student that would suit that family. It can be a single person. It can be um, a couple. It can be a huge family. Um, it can be a retiree. Anyone can do it. The main thing is that they pass their criminal record check. So that's the big deal right there. Um, and yeah, and if they are unhappy, we, we can make changes. Like say if, because sometimes what you see on a paper of a student come I mean, maybe once they get here, maybe their mom helped them with the application or something. <laughs> um, maybe they're not really well suited, but we can always move them and find, um, we work alongside with them 24 seven. So, so yeah, so it's a really great experience. I haven't actually had one myself, but I feel like I do. <laughs> Natalia is always at my house. Um, but, um, but yeah, and we get positive, very, very positive feedback. And I know that um, the program itself has a huge impact on the local economy, but do the homestays also, is there some kind of compensation oh, with yes, that? Oh, yes, yes. So they get $800 um, a month. So they get payouts bi-weekly, so 400 every two weeks. And that is to help them. We call it a stipend. So obviously we call them volunteers because $800 a month is not enough to call them an employee. So, um, but that really does help them with their expenses and they don't have to give any of that back. Um, but help our economy is amazing what international students do because if you spend a day with these girls they love to spend money <laughs> so <they're, laughs> they buy a lot of Starbucks so they um, <laughs> they spend money in our communities as well as their families sometimes like Natalia just had her family come
um, right? To, yep. um, to visit at Christmas time. Mm -hmm. And so they spend money on souvenirs and on doing activities <laughs> and doing different Canadian experiences. And so that helps our economy financially as well as like it brings more jobs to our community. So it's mm -hmm. very, very good. <laughs> now, what was your family's experience of Christmas oh, like loved here? It. Okay. Well, my sister really liked it, the snow, but my mom says, oh my God, it's too cold for her. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you get used to it. I was like that at first. <laughs> how did how did it hit feel by March? Let's say, did you get oh, adjusted? Yeah, once it was like March, once there was like a sunlight of sun, I was like, oh my god, it's so warm. <laughs> Can we talk a little bit about where you both are going to school? And I understand that you you have the same homestay, the yep. same family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's that like? It's yeah, it's really it's really fun. We both go to the same school too. We go to Harborview and Grade Eleven. And yeah, I really like this school. It's really good. And do you find you're practicing both languages as, as you're living here? That, yeah, I have, uh, like usually I take, I have all my classes in English except French. I take like French immersion classes and yeah, it's really interesting. Like when I came, the accent is a little bit different so I didn't really understand. It was, <laughs> it was a little awkward because nobody understood me. I was like, okay, what, do I, what am I doing here? But I got used to it and yeah, it's okay now. Is this your first time doing an exchange like this on yeah. this kind of a scale? It's like the first time being away from my parents for that long. But it feels so short, like I just can't believe we're going back soon. I don't want to go home. <laughs> I'd rather stay. I know. Uh, we don't want them to go either. <laughs> Always lots of tears at the airport. Yeah. <laughs> I can sad. imagine, but do you find that from hearing from past families that these connections last a lifetime that people stay oh in touch. Oh my goodness. I met with a host day this past weekend and she has had 30 students in total. She's been with us for years and she said every single one of them she still has connections. She goes to their wedding, she goes to their graduations. Like So yeah, they become an extended part of your family for the most part, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like you have two families, yeah. like one yeah. in your home country and one here. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And if you find that there's, you mentioned uh, when we were talking before the camera started rolling that some students will even stay on and consider staying in New Brunswick or, or Canada for university. Yeah. Oh, for sure. We actually just did a tour um, of a few different universities in New Brunswick and colleges. We took them, stayed in a dorm, had an yeah. interesting experience. <laughs> and um, I think theirs was better than mine. <laughs> I don't dorm life's not for me. But um, yeah, and so some of them do choose to come back for university. Some of them actually just go home for the summers and they do all their um, high school years here so they come for the mm -hmm. whole four years and then they do university here and then a lot of times um, even their parents will immigrate here oh, so wow. they kind of send them to pave the way and then and then they'll immigrate here so yeah it's a really cool cool program it is Natalia and Kate what are your plans for next year will you go <laughs> home for your is it grade 12 you're yeah. fine well, in Czech Republic, there are uh, 13 grades, so I still have two years to graduate. I don't have to repeat this year, but I have to do grade 12 and grade 13 there, too. For me, too, I still yeah. got two more grades ahead. I really wanted to stay because it's so much easier if I just did grade 12 here and I graduated from here. And then all my friends are also like graduating next year. It would be like really fun, but my parents really miss me. We <laughs> so tried to convince them. them. <laughs> yeah. The answer was no. <laughs> <laughs> I tried really hard. <laughs> have you had a chance? Now I know that you're in St. John, but here yeah. we are in St. Andrews. Do you have plans to, to visit this town after? And have you had a chance to travel across the province a little bit? Yeah, we went to like Fredrington with them. Like we saw the campus, but we also got to see a little bit of Fredrington, which I really liked. Like yeah. seeing different parts of New Brunswick. We also went to Moncton for her cheerleading competition. <laughs> yes, when I used to do cheerleading. It's just like different yeah. perspectives of New Brunswick's fun. And we went to St. Andrews too on October to whale watch, to see the whales. It was really fun. Well, I'm happy we at yeah. least are giving you a nice, bright, sunny day to come here for this interview. Yes, so. we're going to go downtown and see and maybe have some seafood. <laughs> <laughs> but our program, we do um, monthly activities with the students as well. So they get to experience different Canadian activities. So some of them, I think your group's gone curling. 
right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, axe throwing and <laughs> different whale watching. Um, yeah, so they try to give them the best Canadian experience as possible so they feel like true Canadians. Go tobogganing. So. Mm -hmm. Hockey games. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll go hockey games. <laughs> yeah. What have been some now that, I mean, your school year is getting close to wrapping mm -hmm. up, but you have a year to look back on and reflect. Mm -hmm. What have been some of the, the highlights and the best memories that you know you'll take with you? Oh, for sure the friendships here. Like, I just, exactly. I just can't imagine life without them now, but it's hard, you know? Yeah, the people, the people you met here, like, it's so interesting. The Canadian people and also the internationals, mm -hmm. because, like, I made a lot of friends here. A lot of, I met a, new, a lot of new people. And I want to I want to visit them, for example, like in Germany and Spain. I want to visit them for sure. You and not, Mexico. You not only make course. friends from like Canadian people, but also you got a lot of international people you can make friends with. Mm -hmm. And look like after this year you can still make a connection with them, which is yeah. I love it. Yeah, their school alone has 30, I believe, students, or at least we did at the beginning of the year. Some have gone home already. And then we also mm. do trips together. Like we went to PEI and Nova Scotia. We've done an Ontario trip. So they get to meet a lot of different um, international students from like in the other provinces, or not other provinces, other cities, so. Yeah, yeah. Actu actually, like now we went, we went to Fredericton for the universities. Uh, there's not many people from Czech Republic. There's like three <laughs> in New Brunswick that I know of, including me. But I met a guy from Czech Republic there. Uh, he's staying in Miramichi, so I, I don't know if I'll, if I'll ever see him again. But like maybe in Czech Republic, yeah. Right. But it was really cool to see him, you know, to meet him, mm -hmm. meet somebody. And St. Stephen, I understand, for one of the local schools here, is quite a big number. Yes, I don't remember offhand. I think at least a dozen. But yeah, we have a great program here, a great homestay here. Neva Palmer is our homestay here in St. Andrews. We also have a group in St. Stephen's and then um, in uh, St. George has, his, has a group as well. So we're looking for homestays. <laughs> we're new students coming in the fall. What's so. the feedback that you get from the community in general in terms of, of what this adds to a town like St. Andrews or St. Stephen. I know New Brunswick sometimes doesn't seem like it's the most diverse place, yes. but when you add a program like this into the mix, it allows us to meet so many people from different oh, parts sure. of the world and really enriches the lives of not just the students, but I, we're lucky enough in a small town to get to meet you too. Yeah, it definitely um, adds diversity to our communities. Um, they We get to learn new languages. We get to learn new, like similarities and differences of the people that come to our countries and um, my daughter she's in school with both of these girls and she's <laughs> learned different things um, shockingly there are a lot of similarities and a lot of differences and so um, things that we would never know obviously we're not going to be able to afford to go to Thailand or to go to Spain or to go to all these places but we're bringing that to our communities and uh, making our communities more diverse and it's very educational for our students and for our communities. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think were the biggest challenges of this experience when you look back on, on this year? What did you find you struggled with most? Well, I don't think, I thought I was gonna really struggle with my family, like being away from them. But once you get <laughs> here, it's like, it's kind of like you're on vacation, but you're not really, but then you adapt really quickly. But it's a challenge to adapt. Like it's diff there's a lot of stuff that are different. Like school is pretty, I would say, different from my school, but you get to adapt that to really quick. Because mm -hmm. it's like you do it every day for 10 months. It's just a routine. But once you get used to it, like a month, you're like ready. Right. Yeah, I thought I would miss my family more. But I think it's gonna be. I like. I still miss them. I, mean, I love them, and I still miss them, of course. Watch this. But the thing is, I I feel like it's gonna be harder to leave this yeah. place than it was harder to leave our mm -hmm. home countries because when we were leaving, we knew we were gonna see him, uh, see them again, you know. But like here, you don't know if you're ever gonna see some people again. Yeah. Of course, I wanna visit them. Of course, I wanna see them again. But maybe I won't get the chance. You know, you'll never know. You know. So thankfully, we have FaceTime and. <laughs> Yes, of course. Uh, I do invite you to come to the airport, though. It's an emotional time. Oh, yeah. It's very emotional. <laughs> had, I'm dreading it. <laughs> we had friends who left for like six months, and it's so hard because you're used to seeing them every day, do everything with them, and then suddenly they're back in Germany, like in their yeah. lives again. Yeah. I we mean, just I still moved. call them, but mm -hmm. it's not like every day. You know, it's not we like know. everyday talks like we used to. Yeah, like 
we eat lunch together and now he's not there, she's not there anymore. It's like Yeah, <laughs> thank you for our social media and the era of, oh. of Zoom must change the game for our for sure, yeah. Not the same, but... That's <laughs> <It is something. laughs> Can we talk a little bit more about homestays? Because I know that's one of the challenges of the program itself. Oh, for sure, yeah. Um, what do you think uh, people need to know that they might not be aware of? I think in, if I'm coming at it from my own perspective, I would assume I would also have to have a kid in school to be a part oh, of this program, okay. but... No, no, you don't. So anyone can do it. Um, there is an age limit. I believe it might be 24 or something like that. Um, but anyone can do it. Single, retired. We actually have a lot of retirees that decide to do it and even widows that maybe don't want to be home alone anymore. They mm -hmm. want to fill those rooms in their house. So um, your home stays are yeah. to, they have adult children. So, um, so their children are gone now and they have these empty bedrooms that they want to fill. Mm -hmm. So as long as you have a bedroom with a window and and a door and a working space and a bed for the students then um, and you pass the criminal record check we would love to have you join us so what's um, <laughs> the general feedback you get from from host families about how the experience enriched their lives and and I also wonder how many of them seem to be I don't want to say repeat <laughs> customers yes. that's not what no. it is at all but to do it year after year I know yes, um, for sure for instance Mark Blanch Blanchard from St. Andrews Town Council I know he does it every year yes right actually most people do repeat it's very uncommon that they only do it once I have heard from people that they've had such a great experience I don't want to do it again and then ruin that oh. like they're afraid to almost do it again you know you have one child you don't want to have a second one it might not be as good as the first but um but overall um, most people do repeat we had as I told you we have one lady who's had 30 students and then wow. so I have quite a few of it have done it for 10 years plus and so they love it they it extends their family they learn so much from it and they get to see our community their own community where they've lived their whole lives in a different view and a different in someone else's eyes like I really enjoy taking these girls and I was talking to them on the way here about things here and you get to see it in their eyes mm -hmm. we took a group to Niagara Falls um, in October and just sitting in the vehicle listening in the bus with all these students listening to the oohs and the uhs about Niagara Falls it's just amazing to yeah it's just really exciting it's like you're a tour guide it's really, <laughs> but yeah it's mostly positive feedback for sure what was one of the things about Canada that maybe we <laughs> Canadians wouldn't think is exotic or, or interesting that that you experienced for the first time here yeah, for the winter. <laughs> you guys, you guys like, oh, oh. <laughs> like, I was really shocked when they're like, yeah, there's going to be, like, this of snow, like, almost <laughs> as tall as you, almost as tall as you, and I'm like, that's not possible, like, you're going to be minus 40 degrees, and I'm like, I've never been, like, in negative degrees before I came here. So I think I was shocking. with you in the first snowfall, wasn't I? Cause oh, yeah. Were, like, yeah, mm -hmm. I was, like, taking her picture and stuff in front of the snow plows. There was, like, a line of the snow I've never seen that before. Yeah, in, well, we I couldn't get her to school because I couldn't get up the hill. I didn't have my <laughs> snow tires on yet, and I kept trying and trying, and I could not get up the hill, so I'm like, forget it. Let's just go to the mall. And so, <laughs> and so in the mall, there was, like, a line up of snow plows, and so I took her picture in front of the snow plows. <laughs> I don't it's think she sees snow plows in uh, mm -mm. Like, Never. exotic <laughs> snow like, plows. <laughs> so, what about yeah. you, Kate? I see, like, I've seen snow before because we, all, uh, we often ski in Czech Republic. And here we actually went skiing to Poly Mountain because we joined the ski and snowboards club in, in, our, like, in Harborview. <laughs> and that was really fun. Yeah, that was really fun. Is Canada a place that will be on your radar for your lifetime as somewhere that you travel back to? Oh, for I would sure. Love to. I would love to, <laughs> yes. Can you tell me, Wendy, a little bit about, I saw you do a presentation at uh, well, three times at three different <laughs> town councils, <laughs> which I appreciated. Yeah. So you talked about, um, and this might be something interesting for people that might be considering homestays, about not just culturally what this program injects into into New Brunswick but also what it does for the schools there's a there's a financial oh, component yes. too um, and it's it's money that comes to the schools via this program mm -hmm. that wouldn't otherwise Exactly. Yes, they get a certain amount of money per student that goes directly to the school. So, and usually um, principals and the school staff um, are told how to spend their money. But this particular money, they can actually use in any manner that they want. So, if they need. Um, 
they need to update their gym or they need a uniform, new uniforms or whatever they want to do with this money, they choose that. No one tells them how to use that money. So um, yeah, so that's a huge benefit. St. Stephen's actually has a bus and I'm pretty sure that that bus was paid for from the money that they earned from international students. So, and um, it's a nice bus. It's not just like any old school bus. It's like the nicer seats in my opinion, <laughs> not straight up. So, so yeah, so it's very, very good for their students financially. So. so, and as we've said, there's around 220 students in yeah. southwest New Brunswick. Yeah. What is the capacity for this program? How, how much could it grow? Is it based on homestays? Is that the biggest challenge in the growth of it? Definitely. They are the foundation of our program. If we don't have places for people to live, like, we, they can't come. Mm -hmm. So um, we would have, like, we get a list of students that want to come, but we would not be able to accept them if we don't have somewhere for them to go. So we definitely need homestays. Right now, I believe we have about 120 homestays stays in southern New Brunswick um, but of course they're not going to do it forever like it's not a forever thing probably like um, sometimes they do it for 10 years and then they don't do it again right like they want to go to Florida or something so we're constantly recruiting new homestays and mm -hmm. so even when we don't need a homestay like we may not have a student right now for you but we would still be recruiting you'll see our ads everywhere and the reason for that is because um, we sometimes need respite care so we sometimes if the family wants to go on their own vacation and not right. take their student with them then we need somewhere for that student to go or maybe that homestay we've had circumstances where the homestay has gotten sick and they had to have surgery we would need somewhere for that student to go so um, we're constantly recruiting you'll see our ads I plaster Facebook and social media <laughs> all the time and um, and as you said we've gone to all the different council meetings um, throughout southern New Brunswick and it's because we're constantly recruiting so and if we don't need you now we will need you <laughs> so. And it seems like uh, the reason I think this is such a great topic for this show is a lot of our audience lives in towns that have a really rich history. And with that rich history comes very big homes. And as you mm -hmm. mentioned, uh, the house where you're staying, the kids have grown mm -hmm. up. But, but here sometimes there's just these big houses that don't really seem to fit families in a, in a modern world, but could very much oh, adjust to sure. this program. Yes, I would love to fill your homes. <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> so each family can take up to three students. So okay. and they cannot be from the same. They can't speak the same language right. because it's very important to us that when they come here, and it might be easy for them if they both spoke the same language. It may be easy for them to just speak that language all the yeah. time at home, um, especially when they first get here. And so we prefer them not to speak the same language and. Um, and yeah, so usually, and usually we'll place all three girls or three boys and so. How has your, how important was the homestay aspect of your year been to improving your English? Did that play a big role in, in yeah, being Yeah, yeah, because like you have to speak English all the time basically. <laughs> and like literally in the, at home and the school, so yeah, I would say. And, since they like they have spoken English their whole life, they speak fast. Sometimes so you gotta <laughs> adapt to that. <laughs> sometimes I can't understand my host, and I was like, "Can you repeat it again?" <laughs> <laughs> when you look back on where your English was at, bef oh, right before yeah. you got here, to to where it's at now, I wish I, I wish I could have met you then. <laughs> um, to Just see? to compare it. Yeah. You don't, like you don't really notice it, but once you look back and look like old videos or something like that, you're like, "Oh my God, I actually did change." Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's true. But we notice, and we do progress reports for them, really? and <laughs> <laughs> for their agency and for their parents at home to know that they're improving. And I have looked at all of them, and ninety-nine yeah. percent of them have improved a great deal. Yeah. Do you have dreams in English yet? <laughs> oh yeah, so there you go. Mm -hmm. that's supposed to be the number one side. <laughs> really? Oh wow. <laughs> Um, can you tell me what you take away from the homestay aspect? I know you'll miss your friends from school for sure, mm -hmm. um, but what but will you family, miss? The family too, because like you spend, it's like half your friends and half the family because it's still like your family. And like, for example, we went to Halifax this weekend. So like the trips, for example, and we do a lot of stuff together. Yeah, so. like she's my second mom basically. Cause yeah. I spent a lot of time together, like exactly the trip. Like she and 
uh, my host cousin were sleeping, so we just talked the whole way back. <laughs> and you get to know her, like I already know her, but more and more. And it's just amazing, like, to hear her live. And like, she looked at us like her children, you know? Yeah. She was speaking to our host cousin. She's like, yeah, they're like my children now. And mm -hmm. like, you feel like, oh, Because you feel she, like part of the family. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Do you feel that you get, I, I mean, I think it's so nice when you have friends visit that I've never been to where we're from before because you see your community through their eyes and you're reminded of what's special about it and you take those opportunities to go to Halifax for the weekend mm -hmm. uh, to go whale watching is that something you hear back from from homestays who love the program just that it gives them that opportunity to to experience their own province again through new eyes. Oh, hundred percent. And they make friendships too. A lot of them make friendships with the other homestays and they come on our trips with us and then they even spend time with those homestays even once the students are gone. Like mm -hmm. they make new friends. So yeah, for sure. So we're almost out of time, but what are your, your <laughs> final words for people watching at home um, if they're considering being a part of this program um, and also how to get involved? Okay, well, how you would get involved is you would contact me or you would go to our website, which I think you would, you're able to put that on your link or, mm -hmm. okay, and um, I, I say give it a try. I, it's a, such a positive um, program and we've gotten such positive feedback, um, honestly, it will change your life, it really will. And I wish I had some testimonials to read. I have had some come in, quite a few actually, and they just bring tears to your eyes. They're just like, these kids become part of our lives and part of our families and even mine, and they're not even living in my house. And <laughs> they're just in my car a lot. <laughs> but um, it's such a positive thing. And um, if you wanna make an impact in someone's life, this is a great way to do it. And Natalia and Kate, what are your final Final thoughts on this program. What has this year been like, um, and how much has it changed your life? Um, I would say that anybody who thinks, like, who's thinking about taking an exchange year, uh, then you should definitely do it because it doesn't matter how long you stay uh, mm -hmm. or where you stay. Like, yeah. if it's Miramichi, Saint John, like, you know, it doesn't matter. But like, you will still have fun, and it will still change your life. Like, you will meet new people and have new experience. So. You will for sure grow, like not only me, but also like I feel like my host parents have learned a lot about me and I've learned a lot about them. And it's just an amazing opportunity and adventure that I don't think anybody should miss out. Thank you all so much for being here and, and for, for sharing. Us. Thank you so Thank much. You. <laughs> my guests today have been Wendy Brooks, Natalia Moreno, and Kate Aruba talking about the New Brunswick International Student Program. I'm Vicki Hogarth. Thank you for watching Southwest Magazine. Southwest Magazine is a news and public affairs production of CHCO Television.